What you saw there was my attempt to try and get these little bottle openers, um, like a final way to make them. This is actually one of the second ones I made. Here's the most recent one for you. Um, first of all, my GoPro little mount here, it's got that plastic. And so this one, I don't know if it just didn't get exposed to much chemicals or if it's a different type of plastic but the coolant will eat this plastic like crazy. I thought people were saying, you know, over time it'll degrade it. I shot footage of um, machining once and I came back a few weeks later and all my little brackets and everything that I didn't rinse off were like dust. They were terrible. I went to just touch them or anything and little brackets were breaking off. And so I didn't get any good footage of actually machining this part. I just got some of the setup stuff. And that's because I was using my really nice suction cup mount and I didn't want to get that sprayed with coolant and, and end up ruining that as well. So I know there's a guy on YouTube that's uh, made a really sweet aluminum GoPro case. I need to get one. I need to get in touch with him. Anyway, what you didn't see was the machining portion and everything went well on the first half. But then on the second portion of it, I ended up killing my little um, Superfly. I'll show you what it looks like now. It's really just the insert that got it and you can see I've already rotated it 90 degrees and I've been using it since and it works fine. I used a big three inch wide piece of aluminum to do this because that was the closest size of material I had. And while I'm holding on to the really thin, you know, the bottle opener is only like an inch and a half um, tall, I guess you could say, the car is. So when I'm holding on to that, I had quite a bit of material outside that it was decking off. And so when it hit, or when it really got thin, it started flexing. And at one point, the Superfly was able to just dig in and, and it was not happy. So I didn't think a big deal of it. Like the Superfly wasn't sounding great when that material started to get thin, but I figured worst case, I might hurt an insert and it wouldn't be a big deal. But I really thought it would go through it. It just might not look pretty. Um, what surprised me was after it stalled, uh, I actually couldn't get the Superfly or my collet out of the mill. So I loosened the drawbar up all the way and I was at least able to, to like, um, I don't know, I guess just pull out the Superfly and you might be able to see where it actually spun on the inside there. You got some fresh metal. But the bigger surprise to me was once the Superfly was out, this guy wouldn't come out at all. So I ended up having to get real redneck with it. Uh, I fed my draw bar in through the bottom of it with a big old, like just the head of a, a sledgehammer on it. And so basically I just used that as a slide hammer, just kept hammering that weight down on the end of the draw bar until this thing finally came out. And this is what I found. You can actually see there's a pretty good divot right there. So you got your little alignment pin that rides in that slot. And the force of that fly cutter actually shifted I think it sheared the alignment pin inside my spindle. And so it was forced, like this whole thing um, rotated inside the spindle until it hit this groove here. So this spindle, or this collet was totally like offset inside the mill, wasn't happy, and so that's what it was caught on. And you can actually see lines where I, I had to hammer it out and that, and that little um, pin was rubbing all the way up. So not good. Um, surprisingly with this collet, like it had some nastiness on the inside of it from where the Superfly had spun inside it. I just took some really rough like 80 grit sandpaper because I said screw it, it's garbage anyway. And I was actually, I just cleaned up the inside of it and I ran like a quarter inch end mill or something in it. And I checked the run out and I was in like two ten thousandths. So I was like, wow. Um, spindle the other day on the inside of the taper yeah, just around like this surface right here. Sorry, I know it's dark. But yeah, inside of the taper right there, we're showing like six tenths, and so I was a little worried about that. Um, the forums all said it's actually like, I think 20 micrometers, which equals like uh, almost eight tenths. So I think I'm okay with that. Called Tormach about it, and they pretty much said if it's machining right, and it's sounding okay, and it's a new spindle, you know, just go ahead and use it how it is and you know wear out those bearings inside it let the bearings run for their life so that's kind of what i'm going to try to do for now is just run it since it's working the only thing i need to do because um i definitely took some metal off of that alignment pin and the tormach guy said this was okay too is just 
get in there with like a small file and just clean it, clean up all the, the burring and you know, everything that, that looks nasty, dress it up. And then if I can just file it down, he said, you don't need that pin. Um, there's been some talk on the forums that I saw that people said you might need it for like your ATC or your power draw bar, but I'm not running any of that stuff. And honestly, I don't really plan to, um, at this point, my philosophy is by the time I have enough money to run some of that nicer stuff, I will probably want bigger, you know, a nicer mill. So, so at this point, my, my game plan is just to keep the mill how it is, run it for a few years, um, probably looking at like seven years and then move up from there with a nice big chunk of cash, hopefully, right? So yeah, that was my excitement this week. Um, also, I know I had a video a while back about um, putting more power into my garage. So I've got my panel installed right here, and then I've got all that wire in conduit along my ceiling. It's gonna tee off right there. And then I've got that conduit goes back behind the mill, and I've actually got double gang outlet box right there full of outlets for me and then a 220 20 amp um, outlet right there for the mill so finally i'm not running off my dang outlet for my dryer <laughs> that's how we started out so so i'm super excited about that along with i've only got two little outlets in this garage so now i've got two right there so i ran the rest of that conduit out here over and then down and i've got another set of outlets and then once this is all done, got an air compressor back there in the corner and an outlet box there. So the air compressor will be all plugged in. So everything will be nice, have its own plug. I'm super excited for that. And then this box goes to a 50 amp breaker in my main panel. So that 50 amp should be plenty to run the Tormach and my air compressor at the same time. And then as long as I don't load up, you know, with my shot back and a bunch of other stuff running on the 110 outlets, I think I should be good. So that's what I've been doing the last couple weeks. I know these videos are a little sporadic at best anymore. I'm about every two weeks these days. Um, to be honest, it's just been really, really busy. Kids are doing all their after school activities again and all that kind of stuff. And, and um, I've actually got a couple jobs coming up. So it's just been tough to get out here, shoot interesting content for you guys. But I thought I at least owed you a shop update. So, you know, I have been actually jobbing out here. It's been, it's been hectic, but, but stuff's happening. So I will see you hopefully soon.